Okay, in this scene we're going to talk about Graves disease and it's going to be represented by this lady who's walking through the graveyard. So we have these graves over here for Graves disease. And the reason why we have a lady specifically is because Graves disease most commonly occurs in women, especially between the ages of 20 and 40. In this scene, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of Graves' disease, we're going to talk about the symptoms seen in the patient, and then at the end, we're going to talk about treatment. So let's begin. So we're going to begin this discussion with the process of thyroid hormone. Let's take a look at this brain over here that's randomly floating on top of the graveyard. We see this brain, and we have the anterior and posterior pituitary over here enlarged, just so we could show what's happening. So what happens is the hypothalamus, in response to low levels of thyroid, releases thyrotropin-releasing hormone, and that stimulates the anterior pituitary to release thyroid-stimulating hormone. And that's why in this scene over here, we see thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, coming out of the anterior pituitary. TSH then goes ahead, and it goes to the thyroid. And it tells the follicular cells of the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4 from thyroglobulin. That's what the follicular cells do. They produce T3 and T4. T3 and T4 are released into the blood and travel around the whole body. And they cause lots of effects. They increase the metabolic rate, they increase cardiac output, and they increase the rate of the sympathetic nervous system. Now let's talk about what happens in Graves' disease. In Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disorder, represented by this auto that's randomly smashed into the moon up here, is a disease whose trigger is unknown. But what happens is, there are B cells, represented the B over here, and the B cells release all sorts of immunoglobulins. The most prominent one that we want to be aware of is the thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin. And that's why we have over here the B releasing this tire goblin. It's a tire goblin who's very stimulated. Tire goblin who's stimulated for thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin. What thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin does is that it stimulates the TSH receptors on the thyroid. Specifically, it acts on the follicular cells, and it tells them to pump out more T3 and T4. So basically what Graves' disease does, it causes an overproduction of thyroid hormone. And that's why Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism. So symptoms seen in hyperthyroidism, such as increased metabolic rate, increased sweating, those will be seen in Graves' disease. But that's not enough. There's more that we need to be aware of. First, we're going to talk about the triad. In Graves' disease, there's a triad. First is the goiter, represented by the gutter that she has on her neck over here. You see this lady over here has a gutter on her neck to remind us of the goiter, due to the hyperplasia and hypertrophy of the thyroid. Additionally, we note these mixed demons by her feet, the mixed demons for myxedema, the pretibial myxedema that's often seen in Graves' disease. And this happens when the dermal fibroblasts are activated. Finally, TSH receptors on the orbital fibroblasts will also be activated which is what leads to a Graves' orbitopathy. Let's talk about that. You see, the follicular cells also express molecules that attract T cells, and the T cells come in and they infiltrate the interstitium of the thyroid tissue. So we have these T cups over here for the T cells, and if you look closely, one of them has tuna fish inside of it with the elephant. The tuna fish elephant for TNF-alpha, that's what's released from the T cells, and the other one has infinity gum for interferon gamma. When the T cells come, they release cytokines, which include TNF-alpha and interferon gamma, which is what leads to an increase in fibroblast secretion of hydrophilic GAGs, glycosaminoglycans. When these build up, it leads to an increase in osmotic muscle swelling, muscle inflammation, and adipocyte count. And this is what leads to bulging of the eye, known as exophthalmos. You might have noticed also that she's very skinny due to the increased metabolic rate, but you can watch our video on hyperthyroidism to get all the symptoms involved in that. There are two more things that we want to talk about. The first is, you might have noticed that there was this doctor coming. I guess he's coming to save the day. He wants to help her out. This is the doctor over here, and it's actually a tree. The doctor is actually a tree. And the doctor tree is saying, I don't want to be late. He doesn't want to be late. So doctor tree doesn't want to be late. This is going to remind us of, well, doctor tree is going to remind us of DR3, and don't want to be late is going to remind us of B8. Graves' disease is associated with the HLA subtypes, HLA-DR3 and HLA-B8. So Dr. Tree for DR3 and B-Late for B8. Finally, let's talk about treatment. And for that, we're gonna take a look at this bar over here. The ambulance is randomly driving on top of this bar. So Graves' disease is mostly treated using medication, like beta blockers. So B for beta blockers. And this is to treat the immediate symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Also, antithyroid drugs come to block the thyroid hormone production and release. R for radioiodine therapy. 
radioiodine therapy can be used for partially or completely destroying thyroid function, followed by replacement hormone therapy. And of course, if the lard goiter is compressing surrounding tissues, surgery is used to remove the thyroid. We'll end off this video with this huge storm, the thyroid storm, which is an uncommon but serious complication that occurs when hyperthyroidism is incompletely treated or untreated, and then significantly worsens in a setting of acute stress, such as infection, trauma, or surgery. It presents with agitation, delirium, fever, diarrhea, coma, and tachyarrhythmia, which is a cause of death. Thyroid storm is treated with the three Ps, and that's why we see the three Ps over here. These are propranolol, that is beta blockers, propofiouracil, prednisolone, and other corticosteroids, and potassium iodide. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our scene on Graves' disease. Please subscribe to the channel, ask me questions if you like, and take care.